Welcome back. You're watching Trade of the Week. Today we bring you a technical analysis on the Fashini Group, Blue Label Telecoms and Growth Point. Moshima Gama, technical analyst from the Money Hub, joins us with that analysis. Thank you so much for your time, Moshima, and joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, quite a diverse uh, group of stocks that you have for us today uh, as we go through uh, the technical analysis. Let's start off with a growth point. Of course, it is a technical analysis. Fundamentally, growth point has been uh, quite shaky. Of course, we know the issues, subdued economic growth in South Africa, and obviously their um, efforts. To, to try and diversify away from uh, South Africa. But uh, seeming that things are looking better in terms of how the different uh, divisions are performing, but we did see uh, fundamentally uh, their um, uh, distributable earnings per share kind of taking a knock. But today we are not focusing on really the fundamentals, but actually how the technical picture is looking like and maybe trying to see if it, uh, if it coincides and aligns with what is happening fundamentally. What are you seeing on that front? All right, so before I actually get into the sh um, these stocks, I just wanted to put a bit of a disclaimer as to mm -hmm. why I've mentioned it. It's quite diverse in, in, um, in as, as, as shares themselves. But yeah. what I've always been telling my clients is you have to kind of follow what the trend is in terms of the economic data mm. um, in order to be able to structure your portfolio. Okay. Now, about two years ago, it was the interest rate factor, right? Interest rates going up, going yep. up, going up. So with the murmurs of interest rates now coming down, I think if they go aggressively, it would be half a point. But I think a more conservative would be quarter, um, yeah, uh, about 25 basis points. Now, if that is coming up, and that's soon, that's actually in a few next weeks, month. Next, next month, you want to diverse, you want to now start structuring your portfolio in a way that suits that. So if there is that, that interest rates are going up, then you want to do something or invest in things that are, um, that have a negative correlation towards interest rates. Mm. Um, so th I always say to clients, it's time to clean up your portfolio. Yes. And you need to find the shares that are underperforming. Yeah. Um, because now it seems as if there's a bullish steam that's coming on and I'll explain why. Yeah. And then the ones that you think ho you're feeling hopeful about, yeah. that's a sign that you must get out. So we start take some profits. Yeah, so take profits because the minute you start feeling like you're hopeful, you must know you're in the wrong, <laughs> in the wrong space. So yeah. the ones I've particularly chosen now, and there is a few of them, but um, these kind of stood out for me in terms of them outperforming the sectors themselves or having a lot of upside momentum. Um, so now, if you're looking at interest rates falling, yes. uh, then sentiment, we, we're now getting into a new bullish phase where you will find um, your property shares, your retail shares, but enough even gold because of the correlation between the dollar and... Um, oh, yeah. So when interest rates are coming down, gold gets tends to go. Yeah, yes. because of the dollar, um, dollar commodity yes. inverse relationship. So now you'd want to be, you know, in gold. They've really run. There mm -hmm. is still some room. But I'm sure you want to start looking at stuff. I'm a big lover of picking shares that are at the bottom and that have got, they're going to go up. So these are the shares that I yeah. see in this particular point in time. Okay. Um, and of course, if the interest rates are going to go up, then uh, consumer spending is better. Mm -hmm. So optimism is on a high. Yes. So we are all feeling a bit better okay. than what we did. And the reason why I chose Growth Point um, at this point out of all the, the shares in the sector yes. is because it is the biggest, largest retail. I think they've got about 388 um, uh, properties pro in their yeah. portfolio. And, you know, there is a lot of upside potential that I did see high prop as well. It did kind of, mm -hmm. I felt like I should talk about it, but it, it, it hasn't really broken out significantly for me to feel ah, to kind of start to feel like it's time to get in ah. so we're going to look at growth point because of the in, it's an inverse relationship with the interest mm -hmm. rate factor as well as um the fashini group then blue label not necessarily but it just seems to it okay. seems to be doing really good for me and it's um i feel like it is a good time to be getting it at a huge discount and it's quite interesting because not a lot of people really talk about a uh, blue label. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into a right. growth point where, of course, uh, the sun is also coming out. A lot of people are going to be going to the V&A waterfront. Right. I mean, all of the, or everything just looks seems positive for growth point. What I've what I've got here is actually the weekly chart, which I kind of dated back. There's a significance for me dating it back because you kind of have to see why mm. I am recommending something like now. this now. It's pretty clear with this particular trend line that's drawn down. This was actually from, so this trend line, this downward trend started in March 2018. Mm. And it seems to be picking up momentum. It started to pick up momentum in October 2000, well, sorry. That was supposed to be October 2023. Yes. 
Okay. Um, a bit of a typo there. But the significance of that is that it's now broken out of that trend and we started to see these rising bottoms coming in. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's usually a sign that clever money is starting to get in because you could see the asset managers, they can't really buy in bulk with the amounts that they, they're really managing. Uh -huh. So they have to start nibbling into it. And the nibbles became quite um, apparent around this area. And as you could see, it's already broken out of that long-term um, bear trend, which is giving us a nice buy at the current state that it's in. But if you feel like, oh man, I've missed the boat or anything like that, the RSI is telling us that, look, there is an opportunity to okay. now um, get into the market once it's come off. So I'm now gonna zoom a bit um, into kind of, you know, same period, but uh, just to zoom into this particular period mm -hmm. in time. So the buy signal was literally given at 12.15. Yeah. So above 12.15 is the level that you would have gotten in. Uh, you could see it's already close to hitting its first target, which would have been the first resistance at 13.90. Mm -hmm. But as I, it, that's the breakout point. But that RSI says anticipate a bit of a correction, which is something if you feel, like I say, if you feel like you haven't gotten in again, it gives you the opportunity. Oh, to kind of, yeah, to, to, to go get in and join the choir. To join, yes. Yeah. So if at all, it kind of pulls back to that 12.15 mark. Then it's good. It's you know it, it, we're in a s wait and see game at this point to how far it will pull back. Should it pull back? Mm -hmm. So if it pulls back to what I would recommend, don't go long now. Okay. Okay. Because um, you'd 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 obviously be getting at its highest price when that correction is expected. Then you'd rather just wait, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it could fall back to that twelve fifteen mark. Um, at the most, I think it would be around ten seventy. Okay. So if it does penetrate that twelve fifteen mark, it means you should still hold off, mm -hmm. and it could just go back to twelve. Uh -huh. Um, to rather 1070. Now, this is the critical part of because it's just entered that bull trend. Yeah. And you remember, it only would then be, become known as it's now in fully in bullish territories if yeah. it goes up by 20%. Yeah, okay. So you're getting in at a time where it might be a bit wonky, but mm -hmm. you're still getting it at a better price than, um, than having to, you know, than if it was pulling back further. So it's already giving us a sign that it's time to get in. Ah, okay. So it has to bounce on this on on this trend line, okay. right? Because then if it bounces, then this RSI will give us a good indication. It's only tested twice, but if the RSI pulls back and then bounces as well, that's a good sign. It then means that there's a possibility that it would either hold at 1070 or even at that 1215. So any of these levels, in fact, like the 1270 and the 1215 make buy make good buying mm -hmm. levels, including the 1390. Mm. So those are the three levels, right? Yes. 12, uh, that, that's 1070, 1215, yes. and 1390. From okay. there onwards, we could then see a possibly a natural progression towards, um, well, through that 1640, giving us a nice another buy signal at 18 and so onwards. Now, when shares break out of long-term bear trends, mm -hmm. they, have a, they have this, it's, it's, it's like a cycle where they kind of complete a 100% retracement to what the all-time highs were. Yeah, okay, yes. So gradually. Now, I always say to people, they say, you know, we're supposed to buy and hold. I always say buy and hold for as long as that bull trend is intact. Mm. The minute that bull trend starts looking like it's, it's, you know, it's losing steam, it's time yeah. to get out. Okay. Um, so it's not always buy and hold for 10 years. Yes, it's forever, yeah. You need yeah. to keep. You so need to know when to take money off the table. Exactly. And every time it breaches its resistance levels, it's time for you. You can just reload mm. and buy more and buy more. So there is a lot of upside potential with this. Um, potentially actually seeing it, it's, it's, past, it's, it's gone be beyond the, uh, the 34.50 mark, but that's a long-term view as to where it will go. Mm. But it's important that every time it breaches this resistance level in order for it to get to the next. Ah. So if it doesn't, it's, it's, it's a sign mm. that something's up. So that would be the bullish end of things, considering that it's broken out. Now, we're expecting this pullback, right, from yeah. that overbought territory, but how far could the pullback be? Yes. If it doesn't stop at 12.15 or even 10.70. Um, so the alternative scenario is that if it does breach this trend line, in fact, mm -hmm. Um, and the RSI actually gives in, this 1070 becomes a quite critical level because then it moves from being a buy to a caution. Okay. Particularly if, you, if it breaches that 1070. Mm. If it bounces above it, it's still a buy. So if it breaches the 1270, it then means that you shouldn't be getting in. And particularly if it goes below 10, um, rather 9 Rand 10, it means yeah, you shouldn't be investing too much. in okay. that. So effectively, this is how your trading strategy would be. Any price above 10 would yeah. be the one you'd want to get in. And you know the ones I just mentioned, the other resistance levels. If it trades below 1070, mm. it's caution. Below t um, 9, 10, it then means you shouldn't be getting in. But the upside potential for this is about a whopping 69%. And that's not wow. even towards its 80. Um, it's, mm. you know, it's all-time high.
Okay. So quite interesting. That's why I'm, I'm finding, I mean, as I say, I'm a lover of shares that have breached long-term bear trends. Uh -huh. Because you're literally getting the whilst the donut is hot. Yes, you know? exactly. Um, and you know you don't want to be the retail person who's already getting in at around 21. You want to kind of get it in when uh. the get in when the um, asset managers are coming in, uh. or rather the clever money. So that's my view with Growth Point. All right. Um, we're talking about retail. Let's go to a retailer. Right. And that is because we like diversifying our exactly. Portfolio. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. What are you seeing there? So um, also the same weekly chart kind of speaking the same language in the sense that it's okay. broken out of that um, uh, bear trend, which was dated back to about March 2018. So that's pretty far. It's about it five years. It was a good year. <laughs> it was. And then, like some, <laughs> yeah, and then, I mean, effectively, this would be a part where you would have made some money, but then it just continued with its downtrend. Yes. But the important part is it's formed those rising bottoms and it's now officially broken out. Yeah. So that's the part that makes it more interesting. Mm. So it wasn't really interesting when it was in the bear trend, but this okay. part is now saying, listen, ah. I'm now becoming attractive for a buy, right? All right. Um, also, if you feel like you've missed the boat, so the buying signal rather was at 140.55. Mm. Feel like you missed the boat, worry not, RSI is overbought, which means, and this is the weekly RSI, right? Which yeah. means we should anticipate a bit of a pullback. So if we zoom it back in, the buy is still at, at 140.55. Um, Nice breakout that happened there, but overbought says we should anticipate a correction, which mm. if you, I, I really would like to buy more of them mm. because, and also just note, I want to just, because this is a freshly broken out, mm. both of them, um, Growth Point and Fashini are freshly broken out. So mm. there would be that, you know, that little volatility that hap happens before the bull trend fully establishes. Ah, okay. So um, they might be, you know, you might be getting in there, seeing a bit of losses. For as long as it's maintaining, it's still trading on this side of the trend line, you're still pretty good. Okay. Okay. So the downside could happen back because I think now it was trading at 146 or something. Mm. So it could go back to 140.55, mm. right? At most to about the 127.30 mark. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the most it should fall. And hopefully if you know if it then bounces on that trend line as well as the rsi bounces on its own trend line then it will then um, potentially then start um you know regaining that upside from from this particular correction okay but it's important that it actually holds above 127.30 okay 127.30 as well as 140.55. It has to hold above those two yeah. levels, or else otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, don't don't. It's not it's not worth our time to be investing. And from there onwards, as the similar to um, growth point, the upside is likely to continue. Mm -hmm. I think the highest it is tested here would be at 211. Mm -hmm. um, so you know these as it breaches resistance levels, it becomes a nice buy to reload. If you miss the boat, you can buy again around those levels. But it's also important before you buy that it breaches those levels. Mm. So it's, you know, it's a trading strategy of some sort. Mm. So now you're getting in at any level yeah. above 127.30 or 140, depending on how far this RSI pulls back, right? Okay. But this, R this, this, this trend line and these two trend lines will be a good signal for you. Now, the alternative scenario, of course, which, is I, which I like giving mm -hmm. um, so that you at least protect yourself against yes. that, is that if it does trade through that trend line and the RSI starts giving in a little, particularly if it trades below the 127.30, then that, what was a buy, becomes a caution. Okay. And if it trades through low, uh, below that and actually trades below 119.10, it means you shouldn't be investing in it. This is quite interesting and, and really, uh, yeah, thank you for giving us the alternative. Yeah, uh, because, I mean, I mean, people <laughs> always kind of, you, you, it's some, it's, so it's a training strategy that yes. I like giving training strategies that you mm. should follow because once you put a number to it, you then know exactly where you stand with the investment, mm. right? Mm. So that's what I, that's, that's, oh, that's how I prefer yeah. to invest. All right. Well, let's go into Blue Label Telecoms, as I mentioned, uh, not something that a lot of people look at. So it's quite interesting there's been lots that's going on there including uh, Celsius for a number of years we've been trying yeah we've been trying and there's no particular fundamentals with yeah that I like but just the fact that yes. sentiment seems to be feeling like this is in vogue and I also did choose it because out of all the sectors well there's only about three shares mm -hmm. in um, in the t in the telecom space mm -hmm. Blue Label is the only one that seems to be pushing through. Mm. Vodacom seems to be making a bit of a comeback but sometimes it does that it it it's it entices you and then it goes then, back and yeah. you just you just I have a love hate relationship with Vodacom to be MTN, honest. Yeah. And I like yeah MTN too, yeah. It just needs to get out of that. <laughs> but you see blue label, I like the fact that it's quite reasonable as well. Okay. And 
clear as daylight also broken out of that bear trend. And this one, this bear trend was dated a bit further, about 2016. Ah. So that's a nice little juicy um, yeah. buy that's giving us at around, so it's around September 2023 that we saw the upside starting to come in, which eventually triggered that breakout, right? Mm -hmm. So the buying level there is about a four and, sorry, yeah, four and 80. Mm -hmm. um, but the RSI is saying, wait for a pullback. So all of these are just saying, give me time. Let me just pull back before mm -hmm. so you can get in a bit cheaper. Okay. And if I zoom it in, uh, yeah, if it does pull back, it would have to literally um, kind of bounce at that 140 mark. At most, it could pull back to 3 Rand 20. Mm -hmm. And it has to hold at 320. And if it does that, oh, wow. then um, that will give us a nice buy. So any level above 320 and 480 make good buys. All right. potential upside as you can see the natural progression of that uptrend there's a lot of upside potential with this i mean blue label um damn i didn't just i didn't see where it traded previously but i mean from four rand to 14 already is mm. is a nice is a nice you know a nice chunk of profit there yeah um the alternative scenario which i have to give is the fact that if it does return back into its bearish area because remember this is the bullish area mm. this is the bearish area yes. And the only way you'd know if it's gone back into that bullish, that bearish mm -hmm. area is if it trades below 320. Okay. So 320, from what would have been a buy if it bounces above it, if it trades through it, then gives you a caution sign. Mm. It means mm, something's fishy. And then where, where are things bad? At 2 Rand 35. Okay. Then don't be getting into Then This was just a false break and reversal. Just yeah. one of those. We just need ah. to not get into it at 235. But any level between, um, I mean, above 320 and 480 make good buying opportunities. Remember, you're just getting in. So there will be that volatility mm -hmm. before that upside. But that's a part of investing. You get in when it's low and just ride the wave when it goes up. Ah. So, so, thank you so much. Yeah, that's it. Um, really, really uh, appreciate the technical analysis and also just giving us a fresh perspective on these stocks. Yes. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Well, that was the Money Hub's technical analyst, Moshima Gama. <laughs>